Hello everyone, welcome into another Joint Movement DPT's video. If you're new to the vlog, let us introduce ourselves. My name is Ryan and this is my beautiful wife, Megan. We are traveling physical therapists who live full-time in our 1994 fully renovated motorhome. And that leads us to the topic of our video, how we picked our motorhome to live in full-time. And it really came down to a couple different topics. Money, age, the ability to travel, and the opportunity to have a little bit of fun renovating. It's a Sunday and I feel alright for the first time. It's a Sunday and I feel alright for the first time. If you're looking into buying an RV to full time travel in or even part time travel, weekend warrior. There's a lot of factors you gotta consider and we definitely had to go over those at that time, which was about a year ago. Mm -hmm. So about a year ago, we were just finishing grad school to become doctors of physical therapy and we had decided we wanted to travel and we decided we wanted to do it in either a travel trailer or in an RV but we didn't have a lot of money and that's our first thing that we really had to consider. That's number one was money. We were hoping to spend around $25,000 on everything. That meant whatever tow vehicle, tow vehicle, camper, yeah, the trailer, any um, renovation we had to do to it, any fixing, any tires, all sorts of things and really that is not a lot especially when you're looking at um, having a trailer and a tow vehicle yeah that's pretty that's pretty low budget and even the fact that like we were saying we were getting out of school we did not have twenty five thousand dollars just sitting in our bank account no we were trying to figure out where we were going to get this from how we were going to make it work and so that's really what led us to finding Big Betty. We were just scouring basically anywhere we could, looking at a whole bunch of different for sale lots and looking on Facebook. Really at that time, we had a little bit of money saved up from just our part-time work jobs. We had about $10,000 in the bank that we knew we were going to put towards a down payment or something like that. Um, and we were scouring the used market. And, and there's always the used market with RVs is huge and so we are finding great deals on travel trailers and fifth wheels and and stuff that we could handle and do a little renovation on the issue came with the truck the tow vehicle we could not find a tow vehicle cheap enough and mind you our budget was about twenty five thousand dollars for both and you could probably buy a used truck for about twenty thousand, twenty five thousand, and it would still be like two hundred thousand miles on it. Yeah, and, and not be, even a diesel or anything. And you'd be worried about your ability to tow and breaking down. It was crazy. I mean, we uh, we looked at used trucks too, and the trucks we were looking at in our price range of about ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars. I mean, there was like rusted holes in the floorboard, tons of miles on it, engine swaps. It was just. A disaster we just never found anything and that's what kind of led us to Big Betty we were not in the market for motorhomes that was just not on our radar and Big Betty kind of picked us out of it because we couldn't afford a tow vehicle that really led us to looking at RVs that already had the engine in it and also the living quarters and we saw her on Facebook marketplace for $8,000 and we ended up getting her for $7,500, um, which is bottom priced. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very low for a Class A motorhome. Now, Big Betty is a 1994, so she is 25 years old. Mm -hmm. And there was definitely work to be done. There was some noticeable water damage in the walls. It was a big project to take on. And that leads us to our second point. We had to consider the age of the things that we were looking at. We knew that we weren't going to be looking at brand new items or even items that were like five years old. We were looking for old, yeah, old vehicles. Yeah, we knew that we weren't going to be able to get something new. We were hoping to stay in the, you know, the sweet spot of about 10 years old. 
Um, but even when we were looking at some 10-year-old vehicles, they just weren't fitting into our price range. Mm -hmm. What's nice about buying used vehicles is that you're dodging the bullet of depreciation. And so that's a big factor. That initial depreciation of driving something brand new off the lot, we're avoiding that. And with Big Betty, I mean, she's completely depreciated. She can't get any cheaper than she is unless she breaks down and we could sell her for parts and get maybe $2,000 out of her. There's a big misconception that if you buy a brand new RV right off the lot that you'll have no issues with it. And if you look at anyone else on YouTube that's full-time RVing um, or who has bought a new travel trailer or fifth wheel, that's just not the case. The, the fact is, is that you have a home that you are taking 60 miles per hour down the road, and it's like a massive earthquake the whole trip. And so things are going to go wrong. And that is the big reason why we chose to go used and go really used in this case. So the big thing about us buying a used RV was that there was definitely things we had to work on. And we knew that going in. That was actually kind of one of the factors that we had was that we wanted to renovate something, really make it our own. We are seeing all these, you know, cool travel trailers that people had put tile in and new floors in. And they just looked really homey. And so we really wanted to do that and and we're not afraid to to say that we wanted to kind of be a part of that and have that experience and so we knew as we were looking at used rvs and really old ones there was going to be issues and so when we bought big betty we could see that everything was way outdated way outdated way outdated <laughs> it needed a facelift there was these old lamps on the wall and fabric everywhere was gross also in the back bedroom we had water damage from the shower and and from leaks in the roof and and so it was a big project but we also knew that we wanted to tackle it so you may be asking yourself how in the world do you find a good quality 25 year old rv <laughs> uh, and th that's a really good question um, a couple of things that we looked for to make sure that we were buying a project that we knew we could handle and we wouldn't get in over our heads with was um, for good previous owners. So if you can find an RV that's been owned by one person for its entire life and you can tell that they've taken good care of it, that's a great indicator that it's a good way to go. For us, we had a whole file folder of all of the records that um any service that the rv had all of the records of rv services uh new parts that were put in manual like the 25 year old manual is still in there and so to us that was a really good sign that somebody had taken care of this and cared about what was happening mm -hmm. with it and a majority of the ownership was from one person. It was an older couple that had owned the RV since they bought it brand new in 1994. Mm -hmm. And that's always a really good sign, finding a grandparent RV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, if, and, and, and they're out there because they've owned this, they've taken care of it, they've had a lot of, you know, a lot of adventures in it, but now they've gotten old enough that they haven't been taking it out as much, aren't using it as much, and so now they're looking to sell it. But because they took such good care of it and have kept the detailed records of the service, um, you can feel kind of more confident in, in buying that yourself. Right. Um, we also noticed that the roof was just resealed, which was a really good sign. It looked nice and white and it didn't have any issues, so definitely get up there and inspect your roof. We also noticed that the cushions were in really good condition, just not overworn or mm -hmm. torn up or anything like that, which might not matter if you're going to replace all of that kind of thing, but it's just a good indicator of how well it was taken care of. Now, I mentioned that we knew that there was water damage in there, but let me preface this, is that it was old water damage, like from an older leak. And so it wasn't actively leaking. Like Megan said, the roof was recently sealed. Um, but it was like an old leak where like the shower just wasn't, the shower walls just weren't quite doing its job. It was leaking up over it. And then like an old roof leak back in the bedroom. 
um, that was fixed. It just needed a new wall to rip out all that stuff. Right. So ways that you can kind of pick out those issues is by going around, pushing on the walls, seeing if they're soft or giving way. And you can also use your nose to just see if there's any weird and funky smells going on. Yep. So all of those things, I mean, we knew that the water damage was there, but um, we thought we could fix it. And we have videos on fixing it if you need to see an example of that. And um, it kind of, it ran. We took it down the highway. It, it cleared mm -hmm. all of those important check boxes. So yeah, that's kind of how to look for a quality used 25-year-old RV. <laughs> <laughs> Another perk of buying the RV was that we were going to have the chance to renovate, which Ryan said was one of the things we were looking forward to. And since we were able to renovate, we really have learned a lot, especially me. I've, I've learned a lot about um, small projects and small tools, figuring out how to figure out problems and um, it's been a really valuable and fun experience. Yeah, we had no experience. I know sometimes the YouTube videos look glamorous and that we are like super experts, but we had no experience. We had never reno renovated an RV before. I've had a little bit of experience just from um, working with a few tools here and there from my from my dad and my, my grandpa's showing me different stuff. But when we hopped into it, we just had to immerse ourselves in this beautiful world of YouTube to learn how to do things mm -hmm. and then learn from other people's mistakes and learn from their triumphs. And that's hopefully what our videos have been for you guys is our triumphs of when we did good things. <laughs> when we did figure it uh -huh. out. <laughs> but we have learned so much how to use different tools that we've never seen before, um, how to fix water damage, how to install a sink how to do butcher block countertops, how to lay flooring, and, and the list goes on and on. And so those skills that we acquired, I mean, that's priceless, truly. Yeah. Lastly, as we considered buying an RV, I think we really wanted the convenience of our home being our home and being able to just move that from our contract to contract. And when we say contract to contract, we mean our travel physical therapy contract because we'll go work someplace for about three months and then move to the next place. And we just really didn't like the idea of constantly at the end of our contracts to load up another U-Haul truck with all of our apartment stuff and then move to the next city and try to find some short-term housing. And that just sounded like a nightmare to us. And then to add with all the constant change travel therapy is, now we had to get used to a whole new home environment right. and we wanted some consistency in our home. Right. And there are a lot of added costs to not having an RV and because we were able to get Big Betty so cheap and do renovations cheap by doing them ourselves, we really think that we've saved ourselves a little bit of cost in the whole process of moving with travel therapy because short contracts in apartments are usually really expensive. Moving your furniture with a U-Haul truck can get expensive. And not every location has short-term housing and so like here in Montana we're in a very very rural town uh, a very small hospital we're at and they just don't have they don't rentals have here. They just don't have any rentals, and so we were able to come here because, because we had an RV and we could stay at an RV site. Right. So there's payoff to having the comfort of home and having something familiar, but also having flexibility to go to places you may not have been able to without the RV and having a little bit of a cheaper solution when thinking about those short-term apartment rentals. A few things to consider about living full-time in a motor home specifically that we've learned is that you're going to have to have some type of commuting vehicle and so you're not going to want to commute your whole big class a motor home or class c motor home to the hospital and back like our work we had already owned um, a small car our little prius that you probably saw in our video of our prius camping <laughs> and so we knew that we could at least pull that behind the motorhome and that's what we do. 
And right now, how it works out is we only have one vehicle and we commute together, or in this case, we can actually ride our bikes to work. We're that close. We're very close. So that would change if we go to a contract where we're further away or we're commuting to different places. Um, so we would have to have one car that I drive and one car that gets towed behind the RV. That's another factor to consider because then at that point, we are trying to keep up three different engines. And so you have your motorhome engine and then you have the two little car engines. And that factors into cost. And uh, we haven't ever ran the numbers on that. Uh, but that's something to consider because you're going to be having insurance on all of it. You're going to have to do oil changes for all those, and then things break down in the engine. So so that's definitely a big factor to consider. In that case, it might make more sense for you to have a travel trailer if you already have a tow vehicle like a truck. Because then you can use the truck as your commuter vehicle, and if you had another, if your significant other also had to commute to work, then they could drive an additional car, and you're still only servicing two engines. Another factor to think about is that if our motorhome breaks down, then our home is broken down. And so it can't move. We don't have any place to go. Now, that's kind of the same with if your tow vehicle broke down, then your travel trailer can't move until you get a new tow vehicle. The difference is, is that if we can't get our RV up and running again and fixed, then our home, We're homeless. our home is done. And in the other scenario, you would be able to get a new tow vehicle eventually. And we definitely considered those things when we were looking at Big Betty as a motorhome and like owning the motorhome as, as our home. But what we kind of decided was that we were getting Big Betty at such a low price comparatively that even if we had to do some major repairs um, to keep her on the road, we would have still been way under what we were projecting. Right. And another thing we thought about was if we didn't go with Big Betty at the price that we found her, we may not have ended up traveling at all, or we may have not ended up traveling in a motorhome or in a trailer, which would have been fine, but um, it was something that we wanted to do that we thought would be beneficial. So it was just important to us to get into it where we could and to not wait until it was more feasible and then maybe end up never doing it so right and i think we i think that's good for any rvers out there who are looking to go full time whether it's with travel therapy or not sometimes we wait and wait and wait for the perfect rv and to be honest it's it's not out there or the perfect rv is just whichever one's going to get you out on the road and and yeah. seeing cool things and going to different contracts and that is the perfect RV. And so in the end, that's what this kind of became was this was the mode to get us into travel, which we have fully enjoyed Yeah. over these past three months. It's been awesome. Don't let your paralysis by analysis keep you away from, from getting something. Be smart, but eventually just go for it. Get out on the road, and then you can always course correct from there. And with that being said... We hope that you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. We just want to share our experience with you so that you can start traveling or start getting into an RV if that's your hope. So we hope this was helpful. If it was, please let us know. And please let us know at what stage you are right now. If you're in your RV renovating, just thinking about it, we'd love to hear about it. Um, and like and subscribe our channel because it supports us. And thank you so much for watching. Until next time. We'll see ya. See ya.